Hey there. What I wanted to talk about on this video uh, is final detailing. So this is those little things that you're going to add to your armour um, after you've finished constructing it. Maybe before painting, maybe some of them after painting. And basically they're just all the bits that really bring it to life. And this is one of the most fun stages of building your armour because it takes it from being that sort of um, just uniform foam construction to kind of really popping out and uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun just finding all the little bits uh, around the house or whatever that you're going to use to stick onto it. Um, I, I've got a, a sort of a, a mantra if you like when I'm uh, making these final details on the armour that I try and use something uh, in lots of different places on the armour. Um, so I use the same thing in a few different places and that just kind of ties all the armour together and uh, makes it seem less like you're just grabbing stuff and sticking it onto the armour and more like um, it looking like it's being manufactured in the same kind of way. So what I did with the um, Space Marines, I've used these um, grills where there's sort of three little grills in a line and I've used them in a number of different places on the armour. I've used them here on the earpieces on the helmet, I've used them um, on the forearm there, uh, I've used them on the front of the shins, I've also used them in the um, centre of the um, stomach area as well. Um, they are just pieces that I cut out of this um, panel from a washing machine. Um, this goes on the bottom of a washing machine. Uh, it's not needed, it's a rat slash mouse shield. Um, so I didn't need it on our washing machine, so I used it. <laughs> and you can see where I've cut these out. Um, I also used them on um, one of the weapons, the chain sword here. Um, you can see those three grills are um, near to the handle. And again, I think it just helps sort of tie all the pieces together. Um, something else that I also like doing is just kind of finding random bits and pieces that kind of look the right shape. Um, like the ear cups here were just the lids from some containers. Um, on the back of the helmet there, that was uh, packaging from some razors. These little round bits here were the lids of some um, baby food containers that I like the look of. Tubes were brain tubes from an old washing machine. Um, helmets, no not helmets, skulls. Skulls, they're kind of like a helmet on the inside. Um, these are um, just Halloween decorations. So I just went to the local doll store, bought a whole bunch of um, different sized skulls, chopped off the front part of them, um, where I needed to uh, shape the back of it just so that I could stick them on in various places. So I've got one on the helmet there, there's one on the back of the backpack, there's a, a really large one on the front of the knee there. There's actually a pirate skull, hence the bandana. Um, and there's a few smaller ones just dot, dotted around on the armour as well. Um, I also used um, different thicknesses of EVA foam to make some of those final details, like here on the um, bolt piss, so I've got some real thin EVA foam, it's like 2 mil, something like that. Um, I've also used 7 mil EVA foam, like here on the top of the slide, and for the, um, for the chapter badge, tactical markings on the shoulder pauldrons are all from 7 mil EVA foam. Um, the scroll here on the front of that shin is also just that 7 mil EVA foam. Um, the lettering, which a few people have asked me about, is... Um, I cheated. It's cardboard, pre-cut lettering that um, is sold as, uh, as for um, making scrapbooking type um, projects from. So you just, you just press out the letters and glue them on. So I've used that in a few places on that knee there. Um, on the tactical shoulder pauldron there's a, a Latin motto across there. I, I actually really like the way those came out. And there's also another one on the side of the chainsword. Um, which brings me neatly on to the weapons. So these are, um, this is just free handed. It's from 12mm EVA foam. I just got a picture that I like the look of on the internet and kind of copied it, kind of got it to the right size, made it two, um, two handed grip, um, just because I kind of liked that, the way that it looked. Um, the, the grip has a uh, broomstick handle that runs from the bottom here about halfway up the blade. That just gives it some strength so that it doesn't flop around when you're um, wielding it. And then in the pommel here, there's about half a kilo of lead fishing weights. 
that just help to give it a bit more balance so that it's not constantly tipping forward and hard to, um, hard to handle. Um, some of the other smaller details on like these little round pieces and um, these little rectangles and, and circles and things like that. Uh, just some off cuts of um, laser cut pieces that I had but really this is the stage where you can just be real creative. Just look around, um, find things that are going to work, eye them up and see how they look. They always look better once they're painted so don't be too put off if you step them on and they kind of go in it doesn't look great. For Iron Man, um, the thing that I used that I repeated all over it were the um, bottom of coke cans. So I used those to create the bolts on the shoulder um, joints and also uh, on the elbow joints and on the knee joints as well. Um, again, it just kind of ties it all in together. So um, have fun with this stage. Don't go too mad. Just don't throw everything that you've got in your in your scraps box at it. But um, you know, know when to stop and. Um, but you can always add more later, but it's a lot harder to take it off again if you've added too much. Um, the bolt pistol. Um, I kindly use the template for this. Uh, it's, this is a, a, a technique that I've used to make a few different things now. Um, this is, I've got a picture off the internet, and I scaled that uh, of the side of it. I, um, I scaled that till it was the right size, the, the size that I wanted. And then I just cut out some of the main parts. Um, and trace them onto the foam and then cut those out just to give me the base construction for it. So that was used for the slide and the mechanism and the magazine areas. And then from there I just kind of eyeballed the rest. Uh, it's not hard to do at all. Um, just give it a go. In this one I also um, had a toy machine gun that I gutted and put the workings on inside. And in the telescopic sight there's a uh, red LED. Um, I, can't, I, I like adding LEDs to the armour, uh, for no reason other than I think it just looks cool in photographs. The um, final thing that I'll um, tell you about detailing is these purity seals, how to make these. Um, there's a number of different ways you can do it, you can just mould them directly out of things like um, FIMO or FIMO as sometimes it's called, uh, which is an oven bake modelling clay. Um, I did something different, I made the, I made a master out of plasticine and a Halloween skull. Um, this is the remains of it after I scooped it back out again. I built that onto a small uh, piece of wood. Then I built a box around it. Then into that box, which was sealed with hot glue, into that box I poured some silicon casting resin. Um, sorry, casting rubber. And made this, which is then a, a master mould, um, I then used some red flexible urethane, mixed that up, poured it in, let it set, popped them out and made a bunch of these. So they came out real well, they look just like wax too which is real useful, so I didn't really need to paint and varnish them or anything like that. The, um, the parchment that's on there with the, um, with the text on it, let me just get a bit closer. I'll tell you how I made that. So the parchment is actually just a tea towel cut into strips. And to get the text on it, what I did was I um, printed out on a laser printer some mirrored Latin text and logos. So just used uh, Microsoft Word and WordArt to mirror the text and did it in a gothic sort of text. Ran it through the laser printer twice so it's got double the toner on it. Then what I did was I got those strips of cotton, laid them onto the workbench like this, got the piece of paper, put that text down over the top of it, then used masking tape around the edges to stick it all down and hold it in place. Got some nail varnish remover which has got acetone in it, acetone is the important part, you can use pure acetone too if you can get hold of that. Um, poured the acetone onto the paper until the paper was um, saturated with the nail varnish remover and then use the back of a tablespoon to um, burnish it's called to um, transfer that toner onto the um, parchment. Now you've only got about 10 or um, sorry about 20 or 30 seconds to do that before the acetone starts evaporating. So pour the acetone on, burnish it right away. You don't need to be um, too precise with it, just make sure you cover all of the um, text at least once and then when you take it all off, what you'll have is you'll have that text repeated, but it'll now be the correct way around, 
um, on the parchment. It does mean as well that you kind of it lends a slightly faded effect to it as well, um, which is kind of what you want because you want these to look slightly old. Um, then I just used a cigarette lighter and a heat gun to um, just to brown the fabric to make it look aged. You could also use instant coffee granules or, um, or a wet tea bag um, to achieve the same effect. It's up to you really. I added some little leather tassels on these as well, just so I used leather in a few different places on the armour, just as an accent piece. Um, my Space Marine has got Celtic heritage, so I liked using the leather because it kind of reminds me um, of Celtic armour a little bit. The, um, the joints, the joints in the armour, so um, pretty simple. The elbow joints are just two bolts that run through each side and there's a nut on the inside holding it in place and then the arms just free to pivot on those. You don't need to be too clever with the elbow joints, they don't take a lot of strain. Um, the fill-in pieces here um, are get one of these. aluminium ducting. Um, it's aluminium ducting with a, a lycra sleeve over the top. I just got some lycra and sewed it into a sleeve and put it over the top. And that means that you kind of get that nice non-glossy black effect to those joints. And use the same thing for the knees as well. I'll show you one of those. So there's the um, there's the knee joint. And the back of the knee joint there as well. Just use exactly the same thing. It's that same aluminium. Extension. Works really well. Hinges for the knees, just two bits of flat stock aluminium with a bolt through the middle and they're very firmly glued to the inside of the shins and the thighs. But there's one of those, um, one of those uh, vents, the three hole vents again. Right. So um, the thighs are attached to the cod piece with these little plastic buckles. You can see some of the, the strengthening I use the um, edge pieces there. Um, and then the cod piece just sits on my shoulders because it's got a, um, like a, a pair of braces on it um, that just sit over my shoulders and that means the legs hang off your shoulders rather than being lifted up by your feet which would make walking quite hard. Um, there's no joints anywhere else on the suit really. The shoulder joints I've already shown you in a, in a previous video so I won't show you those again. Um, well, that's going to tell you about it. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you about my next project that I'm working on. Look, if, um, if any of you have got any, any other questions about some of the things you've seen on my armour that I haven't gone through, but, um, just let me know in the, in the comments. I'll either answer them in the comments or if it's something that's suitable, I'll put it into a, a new video. Um, so my next project, this is it part of it. <laughs> um, you might know what it is. This is how, how it fits. Um, one of many parts. It's made from fiberglass. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. You try and guess. If you know, put it in the comments. If you don't know, well, you'll see. Ah, I know what I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to tell you about the lights in the eyes. So Iron Man and Space Marine both use the same technique for the lights in the eyes. There they go. Um, you can see through these and they're quite effective particularly um, when it's dark. It's daylight at the moment so you can't see them that well but what they are is they're mirrored sunglasses lenses. Um, for the Space Marine they're red ones and Iron Man they're blue ones. Then there's some very fine mesh you just put over the top of the lens like that and then you have an LED that fires in from underneath and over the top of the lens. Now this is a white LED, I, I used white LEDs for Iron Man and red ones for the Space Marine but it actually kind of achieves the same effect as you can see anyway and um, they are quite easy to see through. Look if I, um, if I hold that up there you can see it's reasonably easy to see through, even with the um, even with the light shining across them. So, um, 
much better than for visibility anyway, much better than having the LEDs kind of shining outwards and then you looking through a slot underneath. Um, if you do that, the eyes will look extremely bright, but your visibility will be very restricted because you're just looking through a tiny slit. Um, and with the Space Marine suit being as cumbersome as it is, then um, reduced visibility is probably getting uh, verging on the dangerous, so I decided to use that technique on these ones again. Uh, the boots got small platforms in, they're about two inch, two and a half inch platforms, and I've used these elasticated shoelaces, which means that it's very easy to do the shoelaces up kind of remotely. I can actually do them up through the top of the shin, uh, which makes things a lot easier. And then the boots are hinged too. That's not a joint at all, it's just because the toe boxes aren't connected at all, and the sole is one piece of so they just tend to pivot naturally there anyway. Alright, I'm going to sign off, so let me know if there's anything else that you're interested in seeing, and I'll put it together, but otherwise, um, the next video that you're going to see is going to be some more progress on my new project. So see you then.